What's going on YouTube? The Common Sense Professor here and today we're going to answer the question of what is engineering technology? Stay tuned. Let's start by looking at an accreditation body, ABED. So ABED accredits both engineering and engineering technology programs. ABED actually stands for the Accreditation Board for Engineering and Technology. So ABED states that a two-year engineering technology graduate is considered a technician, while a four-year engineering technology graduate is considered a technologist, and a four-year graduate of a theoretical engineering program is considered a full engineer. So by their standard, only someone who graduates with a four-year engineering degree is actually going to be considered an engineer. This is completely false. Let me first break this down by the program. So we have a kind of an understanding of the differences. So let's start with a four-year engineering program. Some people call it full engineering, which I don't like that term. Some people call it theoretical engineering. That's a more proper term for it. Here's why. If you go into a degree into, let's say, electrical engineering or civil engineering, you're going to be expected to take calculus one, calculus two, calculus three, sometimes differential equations, and then some type of calculus-based science like calculus-based physics one, two, and three. Now there are some engineering programs now that are looking to start students a little earlier, so you might take an introduction to engineering class or maybe another type of introductory class while you're taking these math and science classes. Now when we look into this, you'll see that there really is not a two-year theoretical engineering degree. What there is is a two-year pre-engineering degree. The reason for this is because generally engineering students spend their first two years taking gen eds, taking all their math, all their sciences, and all their gen eds before getting into the engineering programs years three and four. It just doesn't make a lot of sense that a community college would offer a two-year theoretical engineering degree when the first two years is spent taking math classes. So what community colleges will do in this case is offer a pre-engineering degree and so a student can actually go to a community college, they can take all their math and science classes, get those out of the way, transfer to a four-year university, and then all they have to take are core classes at the university. So now let's look at a four-year engineering technology degree. Now remember what I told you that somebody who graduates with an engineering technology degree according to ABET is a technologist. A better name for engineering technology is applied engineering. As a matter of fact, there's another accrediting agency named ATME, which stands for the Association of Technology Management and Applied Engineering, who did a lot of work to come up with this new division of applied engineering instead of just engineering technology. Now, one thing to understand is there's still theory in engineering technology, but there is not as much math and science in engineering technology as there is in a theoretical engineering program. So generally students who take an engineering technology program will take college algebra, trigonometry, statics, calculus, sometimes calculus 2. That's generally the most math you'll have to take is calculus 2. Then they'll have to take some type of sciences, but generally those sciences are algebra based. Now that is not saying that a student can't take a calculus based science class. That's perfectly fine for a student to do that. But one of the biggest differences between an engineering technology program and a theoretical engineering program is the hands-on, the applications. That is why engineering technology is considered applied engineering, whereas regular engineering, I'll call it, is considered theoretical engineering. So you can expect labs in an engineering technology program to have a lot of applications based on the industry that they're going into. My students, for instance, we focus a lot on automation. So generally, the labs in my classes are heavily focused on PLCs, robotics, mechatronics, any type of automation that they'll find in industry. So that way, they are better prepared when they go into industry to have this real-world applications. Now, let's look at a two-year engineering technology degree. Remember I told you a two-year engineering degree is actually pre-engineering. Well, someone can actually receive a two-year engineering technology degree in, let's say, electrical engineering technology or um, automation engineering technology or mechanical engineering technology from a community college. So generally, they will have an associate of applied science or an associate of science degree in electrical engineering technology or mechanical engineering technology and so on. I actually went this route. I actually have an associate degree in engineering technology. And that is really what causes so much confusion when you look at a four-year engineering technology degree. Many times I will have students 
students come to me and they will think that they're getting a four-year degree but they're going to be a technician in the field. Well, that's possible. They could be a technician. But what I've seen is the majority of the students that graduate with my program with a four-year engineering technology degree receive positions as engineers. Now, like I mentioned before, both the two-year engineering technology degree, a four-year engineering technology degree and a theoretical engineering degree can be accredited through ABET, but only the two-year engineering technology and four-year engineering technology can be accredited through ATME. So there are plus and minuses to both. So let me just break this down real quick and help you understand the differences. Now, if you go to a community college and you get a two-year engineering technology degree, a lot of times you can have what we call articulation agreements or a two plus two. And what that means is you take two years at the community college and then transfer into a university and get the other two years at the university and end up with your bachelor of science degree in engineering technology. A graduate actually receives an associate of applied science in an engineering technology degree and a bachelor of science in an engineering technology degree. Now, is that really beneficial? Maybe. It could be. So one way that this could be beneficial is you go to a community college where sometimes it's free and many times it's way cheaper than a university and then receive your associate degree, transfer to a university, actually have a job as a technician while you're finishing your bachelor degree. Sometimes that company might even pay for your degree. One way or the other, you're making quite a bit of money as a technician while you're finishing up your bachelor degree. Now that's not always feasible because honestly being a technician takes a lot of time, but you will make quite a bit of money. Now if you're looking at being a technician, then really all you'll need to do is get a two-year degree from an associate degree. If you want to be an engineer, then you will need a four-year degree. There's no doubt about that. One of the downfalls of a four-year engineering technology degree is the ability to get your PE licensure. PE is professional engineer, and a lot of times jobs require a PE licensure. Now, it depends on the state for PE licensure, but some states don't accept that. I teach in a state that does not accept an engineering technology degree in order to be able to sit for your PE licensure. Now, generally, that doesn't matter so much. Students in my program are getting high paying jobs and they don't have any trouble at all getting the job. So that has not been a factor at all in the case of my graduates. Now I will say I teach in a niche program. As I mentioned, it's, it's more of an automation engineering technology program. The demand is very high. And so that might be the big difference for instance, why my students don't need a PE licensure as much. But that is a downfall. You need to do your research on that. So if you're in a state that accepts an ABET accredited engineering technology degree for PE licensure, then you really don't have anything to work about. The only difference between that is sometimes you will have to work a little more in industry before you can sit for that licensure. But there are some states, and again, you need to check in on this, there are some states that do not allow a graduate of an engineering technology degree to sit for the PE licensure. So let's look at these titles that ABET placed on these graduates of engineering technology and engineering degrees. Again, remember, a two-year engineering technology degree will lead to a technician position. According to ABET, a four-year engineering technology degree leads to a technologist, while a four-year theoretical degree leads to a, an engineer. Now, here's the issue with that. I challenge you, go to monster.com or indeed.com or, or, or one of these websites where you can look up positions and type in the term technologist and tell me how many engineering positions come up. Generally, what you're going to find is very specialized positions or medical positions. You're not going to see technologist positions out there for engineers. Again, what I've seen the majority of my students, they receive jobs as automation engineers. They're not technologists, which leads me to the last point in this video. If you get a two-year degree and you go out into the field and you're a technician and you love your job, you're going to have a very high paying, very good job. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. If you get a four-year engineering technology degree and go out and get a job as an engineer, and you love your job, then that's fantastic. Here's what I've seen my students get jobs in as far as salary goes. On the low end, I've seen $55,000 up to $85,000 starting out. That is in automation engineering. Sometimes this is called something different like controls engineering or instrumentation and controls, which is my background. But they, these are very high paying jobs. So the question that you need to ask yourself is that which one is a best fit for you? Are you a better fit as a technician? If you don't mind getting dirty and you really like getting your hands on things and fixing things, then you might be a great technician. If you like the design of things, but maybe you want more of an office 
type job, then an engineer might be a better fit for you. Both are fine. I have honestly seen cases in industry where a technician will make more than an engineer because many times technicians are paid by the hour while engineers are paid by salary. And of course that opens up the doors for bonuses and different things. But a lot of times you'll have a technician and an engineer spending about the same amount of time at industry. But even though the hourly rate of the technician is lower, they're getting paid overtime, which makes up for that difference. If you're confused about which program to choose. Let me tell you a good gauge to go by and that's your ACT scores or SAT. I just want to make it very clear. People will always try to make these different levels, right? So you have theoretical engineering, which is a high level. You have engineering technology, which is lower than engineering. And then you have a, a two-year associate degree. Don't get into that. Any of these fields are going to lead to a great job for your future. Okay. So I really hope that this video has helped you. If you have questions, leave questions below. If you can think of a video that you'd like to see me make in the future, please tell me. I would love to hear back from you.